chapter 7 is titled Exponential and Logarithmic Functions. Specifically, we're going to be covering in this video exponential growth and decay. An exponential function takes the form of y equals a times b raised to the x, in which a is 0, is not 0, excuse me, and b is a positive number other than 1. For example, y equals 1 fifth times 7x. Now, an exponential growth function within the exponential function category is one in which a is greater than 0, so our constant a is greater than 0, and our constant b is greater than 1. In this example, or in this function, b is our growth factor. So we could have y equals 3 times 5x. This would be an, an exponential growth function. So the parent function of an exponential growth function, not to be redundant, is f of x equals b raised to the x. So the graph of this looks like this, in which we have the point, or I'll move that up, we have the point 0, 1. So 0, 1. and a point 1b. Our domain of this apparent function is all real numbers. And our range is y is greater than 0. This makes sense because all real numbers, this because there are arrows, it extends infinitely across the x-axis. Now the range, which again is the y-axis, is greater than zero. So this line will never cross the x-axis and become negative. So y is always greater than zero. Moving on to our x-axis, which is the asymptote of the graph. So like I just said, it never crosses the x-axis. So an asymptote is a line that the graph approaches, yet never intersects or crosses. So in terms of our graphing, we're going to first start with our y-intercept. Now the y-intercept of an exponential function is 0a. So therefore the exponential, sorry, the y-intercept of this exponential function here, a, would be 0, 1 half. So we're going to plot that point first. Next, we're going to plot the point 1b, if you remember from our previous example of our parent graph. So b is 4, therefore we will plot 1, 4. We can use an xy table, as we've done before, to find more points to plot, and then we can connect those points to have our function. Therefore, this is a rough sketch of what our function would look like. Now, having used the graphing utility, this is our official graph for the function y equals 1 half times 4 raised to the x. Now let's move on to our problem b. Our function is y equals negative 5 over 2 to the x. So once again, we're going to plot our y-intercept and our 1b values. So our y-intercept, again, that has the form of 0a, so 0, negative 1. And then our second point is 1b, so 1, negative 5 over 2. Once again, we're going to plot these. So we've plotted these two points, and now we're going to connect them. So this time we are approaching the x-axis from below. So like we've done for several types of functions, we're going to be translating exponential functions. So, like the previous examples, we're always going to be translating h units horizontally and k units vertically. So, before we translate, let's begin with our parent function. That is y equals 2 to the x. But we can really just start with 4 times 2 to the x. So, we know from this that we pass through 0, 4 and 2, 8. 
and we can make an xy table to find even more points and to verify those, but if you plug in 0, 4 times 2 to the 0 is just 4 times 1. Therefore we have 2, 8, and 3, 4 times 2 to the 3rd, we have 32. This is just to give us a general idea of where this graph is going. We don't necessarily need to point the third point, or excuse me, to graph the third point or plot it, but just to know the general trend of our graph. Next, our asymptote is negative 3. And the domain of this will be all real numbers and range will be y is greater than negative 3. This is our asymptote, so therefore everything is above the asymptote. If it were y is less than negative 3, we would get that from a negative translation or transformation of our parent functions. So this is our graph, and we can see the asymptote, which is negative 3. So the asymptote is here, and everything is above that point. So compound interest is a real-life application of what we just covered, and according to its definition, compound interest is the interest added to the principal, or P, of a deposit or loan, so that the added interest also earns interest from then on. So in our formula, P, as I stated, is our principal. R is our annual rate. And T is our number of years. So once again, just to review, our principal is our initial investment, and it is compounded n times per year. So we have this word problem here. You deposit $4,000 in an account with a 2.92% annual interest. Find the balance after one year if the interest, sorry, not interest, interest is compounded quarterly and daily. So first, quarterly, we're going to plug values into our equation. So I'll just write down our basic equation here. So A plus A equals P times... one plus r over n to the n t. So 4,000 is our principal. A equals 4,000 times one plus, this is our rate. And the equivalent of that in decimal form is 0 0.0292. So point two zero 292 over n. n is the compounded times per year. So we're going to plug in 4 because quarterly is 4 times per year. And then just one year, so 4 times 1. We simplify this and for a we get approximately $4,118.00 and nine cents. Now let's approach this problem if our balance is compounded, sorry, if our deposit is compounded daily. So we're going to have the exact same formula, same rate, same principle, except that we're compounding daily. So 365. And then we're also doing it in one year, so 365 times 1. And our A is very close to the previous problem, but $4,118.52. Section 2 is titled Graph Exponential Decay Functions. So previously we dealt with exponential growth functions, and exponential decay is pretty much what you would imagine. 
instead of increasing exponentially, we're going to be decreasing exponentially. Therefore, our graph will not increase on the y-axis, but instead will decrease. So, just to sketch it out, before we had a graph that would look like this. Now we have a graph that looks like this. So our standard form is a times b to the x, where a is greater than 0 and b is in between 0 and 1. This is where an exponential decay problem differs from that of an exponential growth function. Because if you remember, in our growth functions, we had b greater than 1. Now this time, b is in between 0 and 1. So it could be a fraction. So for example, we could have y equals 4 fifths times 7 eighths to the x. Parent function of this graph is f of x equals b to the x, where zero, where b is in between 0 and 1. So we have the point 0, 1. And the point 1, b. The domain of this graph is all real numbers, and the range is y is greater than 0. So let's graph some problems. First, we're going to plot our y-intercept, as we did before, and this is 0a. So in this problem, we have 0, 2 as our y-intercept. And next, we're going to plot our 1b point. This is 1, 1 fourth. So in our graph here, we can identify our points. So we have 0, 2. I'll do that in red. 0, 2 and 1, 1 fourth. Now to have drawn this graph, we will either need to plug in points in our x, y table or think about extreme problems. So if we go extremely to the right, so if you plug in a very big value, is it going to be above or below the x-axis? And likewise, what happens when you go extremely high in the y direction?